Hi, I'm George, and today we're going to do a quick science experiment. Now, we know that barometric sensors are very sensitive. Uh, they can even tell the pressure difference over a few feet, uh, like you can see here. Uh, we wanted to see if we could visualize that pressure change as a rocket ascends, uh, as the pressure gets slower, uh, maybe inflating something like a balloon. Uh, and then as the rocket comes back down, that balloon should deflate again. So let's have a look. Because of the expected small pressure difference instead of a regular balloon, we decided to make it from a partially air-filled freezer bag because it's very thin and we should be able to see it inflate easier. We drew a grid on it with a Sharpie to make it easier to see on camera. We then partially inflated it and with the help of some baking paper, sealed it with a hot iron. We then mounted this thing inside of a clear tube made from PET bottles. The ends of the bag were then taped down with just clear tape. To see what the bag's doing in flight, we embedded a small camera in a block of foam and stuck that inside the top end of a bottle, which will act as the nose cone. This then gets mounted on top of the tube. Because the tube will be otherwise sealed once it's mounted on top of the rocket, we made a bunch of holes around the bottom so we could equalize the pressure inside of it. The whole cube was then taped to the top of the nose cone of our regular rocket. The rest of the rocket prep was normal, and after we attached the parachute and filled it with 1.3 litres of water, we set the whole thing up on the pad. And here is the first flight. Three, two, one. Whoa! Beautiful flight. Oh my God. Let's see a parachute. And this is what it looked like on board. We did not see any movement in the bag. Here we're toggling between the view at ground level and at apogee of around 120 meters or 400 feet. And we're not seeing any evidence that the bag had inflated. We would have expected at least a little bit of movement, but this bag also didn't have a lot of air in it. So what should have we expected? Now we could go on Google and try to find a pressure versus altitude calculator, do a whole bunch of conversions, find the pressure difference and volume change, blah, blah, blah. So we'll skip all of that and we'll let AI make a specific calculator for us. We want to calculate the air pressure at a certain altitude. It was 15 degrees on the day, and we want to know what the pressure is at ground level, what it is at altitude, and the difference between them, and also by how much the volume changes. We then let ChatGPT do its thing. <whistles> then we just copy the code, paste it into a document, and open it in a browser. Okay, so at 120 meters, the air pressure is about 14.49 PSI, and the volume increases only by 1.4%, which isn't a lot. So let's see at 200 meters, that would be 2.3%, and at half a K, that's about 5.8%. Because the pressure difference for our rocket's only 0.21 PSI, we decided to try again, but this time with a bag that was filled a lot more. And here's the onboard view. At first when we saw the video again, it didn't look like the bag had moved, but when you actually look closer, you can see that it inflated just ever so slightly. And when it was back near the ground, the bag again was slightly deflated. Toggling the ground and altitude images, you can see that slight inflation here. I guess when you spread out 1.4% volume change over the entire bag, there isn't going to be much of a movement. 
Well, we would have expected a little bit more movement from the bag, but it is a result nonetheless. Uh, but now it's your turn in the comments below. Uh, we'd like you to leave some suggestions about how we could improve this experiment, maybe make it a little bit more clearer. Uh, and you gotta remember that it has to withstand the acceleration forces and deceleration on burnout. And also the, finally that bump at the end uh, when the rocket lands. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.